For the American Revolution, 1777 was a much better year. Uh, we generally call this the year of the hangman because of the fact that the 777, it kind of looks like the gallows. But nonetheless, uh, this is also a year that the British are going to take off the Bulas. Uh, they're no longer going to uh, reluctantly fight this war uh, like they had under the Howe brothers. In fact, the Howe brothers are just gone. Uh, and instead, we're going to have some major campaigning uh, done uh, throughout the throughout this year. Uh, Lord George Germain, the British War Minister, is going to basically issue his orders. Uh, we Today we would probably call it a surge in today's parlance. Uh, and basically it's going to be this. One army is going to march south from Canada along the Hudson to going down and take Albany. Another army is going to march from New York City and march up the uh, the Hudson and go to Albany. Basically what that's going to do is it's going to cut off England from the rest of the colonies. Uh, and so during in 1777, Washington is going to recruit a new army. He's going to instill harsher discipline. There's going to be larger terms of service, but there also are going to be bonuses for anyone who signs up. But, in, uh, but nonetheless, uh, in September of, of 1777, Washington is going to be facing a, a British army at Philadelphia. This is the third uh, army of, for this surge that the British are doing. And this third army is going to be uh, aimed against Philadelphia. And it is here that uh, at the, in Philadelphia that Washington is going to be outmaneuvered. He'll be outmaneuvered at what's known as Battle of Brandywine Creek, and Philadelphia is going to be taken. So the colonial capital is now gone. The the The... Continental Congress has to flee, and Philadelphia is going to remain in the British hands. Uh, but so that part of the, of the surge was successful. The one part that was not successful, in fact, the one that was most that was most important in terms of it being successful, was the linking up of the two armies down the Hudson. One army under a man under the command of John Burgoyne is going to that, that's the one that's moving south, and Burgoyne is going to continually be harassed by two Brit two American generals, uh, most notably Benedict Arnold and Horatio Gates, to the point that in October of 1777. The, the American and British Army are going to meet, and they're going to meet at a battle known as Saratoga. It's here that the army under Burgoyne is going to be exhausted, and it's ultimately going to surrender to the, the American Army. Uh, and so the Battle of Saratoga is a, is a huge battle for the United States. Uh, it is the battle that is going to prove to the, for the French that the Americans can actually defeat the British at their own game. Uh, and after this, after the Battle of Saratoga, we're going to see the French alliance coming in. Uh, so the Battle of Saratoga, a major turning point in the war, although, you know, at the time, a lot of Ameri you know, a lot of Americans probably wouldn't have known that. So it's, you know, so it's a very important victory when it comes to bringing in foreign assistance. Now, uh, European armies traditionally do not fight in the winter months. All right? There's a fighting season. Even today we have a fighting season. In Afghanistan, for example, uh, there's a fighting season after the, after the snows melt of winter. And, uh, then you see American soldiers getting attacked more often during, uh, during, the, uh, during the winter melts. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a fighting season in the uh, European way of war during this time period, and the American Revolution is no exception to this. The British are generally going to be basically quarter themselves in large cities. Philadelphia is a good one. So the Brits are going to enjoy the winter of 1777 and going into 1778 uh, in relative comfort. In fact, they are going to be uh, next, to, uh, next to fires inside houses. The Americans, not so much. The American army, the uh, Washington's army, is going to post itself just outside of Philadelphia in an area known as Valley Forge. And pretty much all the stories that you have heard are true. Its suffering is rampant. There's co it's cold. It's diseased. Ribbon. There's starvation. It's just a really bad time. But at the, t at the same time that this is happening, the American army is becoming much more a professional force, meaning that it can fight toe to toe against the Amer against the British because of the contribution of one man, and his name was Friedrich von Steuben. Steuben was a Prussian who claimed that he was a noble under the under the Prussian king uh, Frederick the Great. Turns out he wasn't. Uh, he was neither a, a general nor a baron. But nonetheless, the, the name stuck, so we can call him Baron von Steuben. And he is going to implement a strict training regime against on, on the United on the 
the American Army. And basically what's going to happen is he's going to write a training manual for the Army and he is going to uh, help train the, the American Army so that it can fight a European style of war. Mind you, he barely speaks a lick of English, but you don't need to watch too many World War II movies to know what an irate German speaking German at you, uh, how effective that's going to be. Uh, and so, you know, yell, somebody yelling at you in German, you're going to follow their commands pretty quickly. The result of which is that the army that marches out of Valley Forge in 1778 are, is a much more competent army in terms of fighting a European-style warfare, the style of warfare that the Brits want.